Welcome to Ghost Likes channel. I am your host and AI assistant, Vilo, and in this video we'll be bringing in the ASP.NET Core Identity Library and replacing the in-memory one with a persistent database. We will be building on what we have done in the previous video and wrapping up our work on authentication for web applications which are controlled by the code on the server. That will free up room for us to move to single-page applications in the following videos. We can't wait to be done with this drab subject so we can move on to things that are actually interesting like microservices and node-based UIs, but we will have to be patient and get the fundamentals out of the way. This video should be easier compared to the previous ones. To start things off, let's resolve one of the mysteries from yesterday, namely the sign-out callback path. First, so we don't make a mistake, we'll grab the exact name from its options with the help of the ID and then add it to the config file. We'll set a path similar to the sign-in one. We'll also modify the logout so it uses the sign-out async, but this time we will be passing in the OpenID Connect schema. It slipped our mind to try that yesterday. If we do that, run the program, fix the path error, and run it again, what we will get will be the Microsoft logout page. This is what signout async can do with the OIDC schema. We also tried getting the logout path to work with the regular cookies, but based on its description, it seems to have something to do with the return URI that we do not understand, and unlike the login path, it doesn't seem to be redirecting the logout there. It doesn't really matter. Either way, this Microsoft logout page is not necessarily what you want in order to log the user out from the website. If we picked the account to log out from on the screen here, it would log us out of our Microsoft account and we'd need to go through the email verification process if we wanted to log in again. We'll pass on that. Instead of messing with this or the way we were logging out the cookies schema by schema, the most convenient way is to just purge them. The benefit of this approach is that we don't need to think about what the names of the schemas are. We just get rid of all of them. That takes care of this side quest. Let's move on to the ASP.NET Core Identity Library. The reason why we'd want to use it instead of sticking to the authentication middleware as we have up to now is because ASP.NET Core Identity makes it easy to verify the password strength. It also automates the storage of user records in a database. We are going to try it on a new project. The old one can remain as is to serve as reference. Now that we've set up the project, we can begin work on bringing the library in. We need the ASP.NET Core Identity, as well as the Entity Framework. Let us do a brief overview of the library. In it, there are two services that are responsible for all of its functionality. The sign-in manager handles checking the data the user sends against the database and creates the authentication cookies. The user manager handles creating the user records in the database as well as getting the user records from it. Moreover, the library comes with a bunch of predefined types such as identity user, which serves as the model. It also comes with a generic identity DB context that we'll use for our database. Since these are regular .NET classes, they can be extended using inheritance, but we won't be doing that in this video. Instead, let's just demo the functionality. We'll see whether we can figure out if we can also use the library for Azure AD logins. For now, let's leave Azure AD disabled and get to work in implementing what we need in the relevant handlers.
Now we run into our first problem. The ASP.NET Core Identity Library wants usernames, but we are not giving it anything. We can think of two things we could try here. One is to try passing a null for the username explicitly. The other is to check whether we can disable the check in the options. And it doesn't seem we can. Hmm, could the ASP.NET Core Identity Library be used together with Azure AD? How would we get the username in that case? While we think, let us just ask ChatGPT for advice. We haven't used it much yet, and we are aware that might be a failing. To be honest, asking it or Bing how to configure something might be a better idea than trying to make a sense of the ASP.NET docs. An impressive answer. We'll go back and verify it later. For now, let us ask about the username issue. It turns out we were pretty close to the answer, we just needed to set the regex to null. Let's give that a try. So far, our evaluation is that it is a far better idea to ask these bots for advice than spend time going through the docs. What were we doing all our life? And it is not working. If we go back and check, we'll see that what we have set to null is the allowed username characters. And as far as we can see, username validation regex doesn't exist. We tried asking Bing chat and it was pretty useless. Then we went back and tried chat GPT again. Here is the result. As you can see, once we confronted it, it did a 180 pivot on its view and recommended we try what we just did previously, which incidentally didn't work. A human would never lie in this position, so we got fooled very heavily. We looked around, but based on a Stack Overflow answer that we've seen, there are only hacks that we can use. Instead of messing around with this issue anymore, let's just do it the way ASP.NET Core Identity wants. That would have saved us a bunch of time. We'll figure out what to do with Azure AD integration later, hopefully ChatGPT didn't make that up completely as well. The on-site logins and registration are clear, but we want to get third-party integration done with ASP.NET in case anybody is interested in it. It wouldn't be right to drop it here. It would be easy to do it without the identity library, but we'll put some extra effort to see if we can get it to work using it. We did a lot of search and stumbled upon this Stack Overflow answer. We'll try adapting this C-sharp code to F-sharp. First, we'll install the necessary package so we can add the Azure AD service to the dictionary. Though we are wondering whether we could just use the Add Microsoft Identity Web App instead, we'll try following the answer exactly and see where that leads us. We are having some trouble getting the IDE to help us here. 
The ad Azure AD isn't showing up in autocomplete, but we persist and get it to give us something. And as it turns out, the reason it wasn't showing up in autocomplete is because the method was deprecated. It outright suggests we use Add Microsoft Identity Web App instead. Since we are trying to do it the correct way, we'll obey that instruction. We'll get rid of the old package and clean things up a bit and then get to work on plugging in that Stack Overflow answer. Sorry to interrupt the music, but this is giving us a lot more trouble than we thought it would. If you've been watching the video, it has not been long for you, but we have literally been messing with this for hours now, both today and yesterday. Our thoughts are in disarray, so we are going to have to do a review. The current state of the program is that on-site authentication using ASP.NET Core Identity Library works. Furthermore, the Azure AD challenge request does work and gives us the correct cookie at the end. The problem is that use authenticate doesn't at all do what we expected it to do. What we expected it would do is to try out all the authentication schemas until it exhausted the possibilities to find one that worked. What is happening instead is that it tries out just the default one, which is the on-site schema, and then gives up. How useless of it! We scoured the internet as far as we could, but we've failed at finding an easy solution to this problem. As far as we can tell, there isn't an easy way to just plug third-party authentication providers into ASP.NET Core Identity Library. So what we are going to do is isolate it from the rest. Let that library take care of the on-site stuff, and we'll implement the third-party authorization by ourselves. And now that this has been done, let us give it a spin. We'll fix the Azure AD login sending us to Qui later. If we go to user, it should log in correctly and not send us back to the original location. The on-site login should work as well. Well, the email doesn't, but who is going to mess with that anymore? Let us just fix the Qui link. We are also trying to authenticate third-party token schemas even if we have succeeded on-site. We'll put in an if check for that. This should be good now. Let's do a check to see if all the logins and registrations still work and we will wrap up this part. Before we wrap up, let's do one extra thing since it has been bothering us for a while. What if we wanted to do email instead of username logins? This is how it could be done. If we also wanted to show the email properly in the user page, what we'd need to do is manually set the claims during authorization, which would involve extra work. Let's take a break. We've earned it. If you want to reward us for all that hard work that we did, click those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. In the last video, we gave the advice that you should just forget on-site and use third party, and in this video you can see why. Maybe it keeps salaried web devs busy, but as far as we can see, there are only disadvantages to having multiple ways of authenticating a user. You are just doing extra work for no discernible benefit. If it had been easier we would have time to do it, but as it is, we didn't even implement email verification with the identity library, and most likely we won't bother doing a video on that. If you are set on using on-site authentication, you should have enough to make that step on your own. Our guess is that the identity library has inbuilt functionality for sending verification emails. 
As far as we are concerned, Azure AD is pretty good as a verification option. We might have implied that it requires a Microsoft account, and please correct us if we are wrong about that in the comments, but we don't think that it is necessary. Any kind of email will do. Azure AD also accepts telephone numbers and Skype addresses. Also, if you click on that key button underneath the login, it will open up to show a GitHub login option. We don't mean to shill Microsoft products specifically here, not expect for F Sharp, but third party schemes are simply easier to deal with than on site ones. Trying to make Azure AD work for us was quite seamless, but on site ones took a lot more effort to get to this point, and as we said, we still do not have a complete user authentication system for the on site logins despite all this work. Let's not waste any more effort on this. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at authenticating single page applications with Azure AD and after that we'll move on to more interesting things. Authentication is not the kind of subject that should require weeks of study, but a few hours instead. You've been watching Ghost Likes channel, and I've been your lovely host, Vilo. Stay tuned for more.